Hello and welcome my partners in crime and welcome back to Murder Analyze for another true crime case. Now again this is another unsolved case and this is another missing case and this is case two in our 20 case challenge for December to bring awareness and really the campaign for people that's disappeared and are still missing. Now Andrew Gosden, he was uh, 14 year old at the time of his disappearance and um, I say he was 14, he looked more like 12, 11, 12, very, very young looking child. Now this case is a bit, I, um, you know, listen, I know London and I, you know, when I read this case, I just thought, oh my gosh, you know, but um, it needs to be told. And I think I'm going to leave it down to you to see if you can come up with any conclusions why this boy has left home and never been heard of since what you think may have happened because there's uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies in this case I think and um, was it grooming was it something else um, we will see as we go through this case but anyway Andrew was born on the 10th of July and he was born in 1993 and he disappeared actually from central London on the 14th of September 2007 as I said he was 14 at the age of his disappearance but he looked very very young now he was last seen, now this is where the worry comes into it, doesn't it? He was last seen leaving King's Cross Station on the 14th of September 2007. Leaving that station on his own. Now this boy did not come from London. He had no clue on London really, to tell you the truth. He came from um, Doncaster in South Yorkshire. Now, so it's a long way to travel, isn't it? from Doncaster to London, you get off at King's Cross and my gosh, what a shock that would have been, unless he was there to meet someone. But listen, I want to go on with this story um, of this case, of, of, because I think we must go right back to the day of his disappearance really. So it turns out that this young lad was planning to go to school, or it looked, he made it look like to his parents he was planning to go to school on that day. He left to get the bus to school, but he didn't do that, you see. He waited in the local park area for his parents to leave their home. Then he went back in. He got changed out of his school uniform. So he had it planned. He had, and I'll, I'll describe and everything that he was wearing, and you'll see all the slides and different things of what he was wearing on this day, but we are talking about now, 14 years ago. You know, this was 2007, we're now in 2021. So did it really matter what he was wearing, but it may have clocked your memory or something. Um, but also, but this is what he done anyway. He has gone into the park, hid in the park until his parents had gone to work. He'd gone back in, got changed, got his duffel bag. Then he left his home. He went to his bank and he drew out 200 pounds in cash. He then went to the train station and he brought a one way ticket to London. King's Cross. Now, the ticket officer said to him, as you would, you know, do you want the return ticket? Do you want the day return? Because really it's only a pound difference. You know, we love a travel card, don't we? Right? And if you're a Londoner, you use London a lot, you'd know that if you brought a travel card that you could travel all around London all that day and come home. It's all done and it's very, very cheap. He didn't want that. Actually, he insisted that no, I want the one way. That's what he asked for, and that's what they gave him. And then on the train he goes, and he comes then into King's Cross Station, and he is last seen, actually, on CCTV, the only footage of him, actually, at King's Cross Station. That was the last sighting of him. Didn't seem like he was with anybody. But I, you know, I think now that's the outline, right, of what happened to him. And I think we need now to look at his character to see was this unusual for him to do this. You know, this wasn't a streetwise kid that looked 20 and he was 14. He looked 10 or 11, 12 at 14. And he certainly wasn't streetwise. So listen, his home life. Andrew, his parents and... Um, you know, had a good home life. He had a good home life, actually. And when you actually read more into him, it seems like he may be a little bit spoiled. But he had a good home life. 
his both his parents were committed Anglican Church of England Christians um, but they had not baptised any of their children as they didn't want to impose their faiths or views on them. They wanted them to wait until they were old enough to make up their own decision. So you can see now, by, even by this family doing that, this family allows their children to be individuals, don't they? It, you, know, no one, you can't say run away because they didn't want to go to church anymore. So we can sort of tick that off of, of these you know, pushy families that are trying to conform their children into something. This family was not like that at all, really. Far from it, actually, far from it. Anyway, prior to his disappearance, uh, Andrew had not been to church for about 18 months. That was fine, they had no issues with that. He was allowed to go on and do what he wanted. Now, he had been a Cub Scout for a very long time and his father, um, he told his father that he did not no, he didn't want to do it any longer. So this was a few months before he disappeared. Now listen, this boy was 14 and I, you know, mentioned the scouts and you know the cases I do, right? So I think, you know, but this boy didn't leave the scouts, I don't think, because anything was going on. I think he left the scouts because he was 14, he'd had enough, he was growing up, you know, he was growing up. Plus he was a gamer, right? So there's more to then, you know, as you know, anyone that does gaming knows it's hard to leave, isn't it, your computers and go out and do a bit of, you know, scouting or whatever. Um, these days, uh, the kids are much more into that. And he had become sort of a gamer, if you, you know, you call it that, really. Now, his parents have also stated that he rarely, really left the house anyway. He wasn't, as I said, a streetwise kid. He wasn't hanging around the streets. He didn't have a lot of friends. He didn't have any friends actually that come to his home and um, but he did have a small group of friends that he would associate with and stuff um, away from his home but really he was like a home bird they said he was quite happy to be at home as I said he was a gamer and he liked his games and computers and stuff and he was happy to do that and um, you know they were sort of they didn't see anything going on that with his character had changed in any way uh, as always, you know, he was quite a happy child and, you know, typical, I suppose, teenager, a bit forgetful sometimes and stuff, you know, more interested in doing what they want to do than, than with what we want to do. So really, you could say it's a normal childhood. Yes, he may have isolated himself a little bit, but that may have been his character as well. Some kids like it, you know, they don't need lots of people around and he seemed to be a kid like that. Listen, his family used to call him uh, Rue, and uh, that was sort of his nickname, and that's what he was known by in his family. And, you know, if he is out there still, maybe that's the name that he's going by. So rather than Andrew, it was Rue. You know, so he may still be using that name. Now, this boy was a gifted student, right? It was a 100% attendance rate at school. So really him by going over the park and skipping school was not, you know, an everyday occurrence it was a very rare occurrence actually it looked like it had been planned but this boy you know attendance 100 percent this boy was a gifted student intelligent boy very intelligent boy and listen he was in the young gifted and talented talented program and his or other people's i think sometimes ambitions were that he would be uh, going to cambridge now if you're in england and you, you want your kids to get, get on well and go to university. Oxford or Cambridge are usually the two that you are pushing them to go to. But this boy was very gifted um, in that way. And, um, you know, and sometimes you have to think, you know, when you're looking at reasons why this may, boy may have disappeared or just took off on his own, was that pressure too much? But he seemed to love it. He seemed to love uh, the education. He couldn't get enough of it. And the so school really, at that point, he didn't feel was fulfilling him. He, he felt that um, he was a bit bored with school because it came very easy to him. So his personality is young, bright boy, you know, seemingly on the outset, nothing wrong at all. I think he's one of his best subjects. I mean, this boy was a prize winning mathematician, really. And if he had gone to Cambridge, it would have been mathematics and that sort of things that he would have done, I think. That's what his plans were, uh, or plans, you know, for him were. Now, he was described sort of about having this 
attitude, I suppose, of this up and coming new school term that was coming up because, as I said, he, he felt like this school had took him as far as he could go and this happens a lot when you have a very intelligent child and the school are trying and trying and trying to give you extra work but sometimes these gifted kids become very bored with that. They need more stimulus and um, stuff. So he attended um, this sort of summer school, um, like, you know, or, in 2006 it was this like summer school he went to and it was like a two weeks extended um, sort of holiday but in in like a school program for gifted children. I mean and this was at I think Lancaster University and this again was for these gifted children you know this program it to encourage and to help and to stimulate the mind to get them ready you know for other challenges I suppose that they may have had because sometimes when you are so highly academic, you may have other things. But these kids, he loved it. And actually when he returned from there, he was, his dad says, uncharacteristically enthusiastic about what he had been doing there. So he really enjoyed it. Now, this um, school, this um, Lancaster University, this sort of group that they had at this sort of two week holiday learning sort of thing had kids from all over the world now maybe that's what excited him that's where the enthusiastic enthusiasm come from he had met new people like-minded people people like himself did he meet someone there that said listen i'm in london come to london he could have because he definitely was more enthusiastic when he came back from that and literally that was only then you know um what a couple of months wasn't it some holidays when he went missing in the September so he hadn't been back at school long after this before he disappeared it could be relevant we just don't know now he Andrew did not at all exhibit any um depression or um any he had no signs of being bullied. There was no signs in any way of him being bullied either at school or at home or anything else like that. Um, his father said he was a bit absent-minded. Um, he, he was not streetwise at all. And he is potentially or was potentially vulnerable. Now, when you see the pictures of him, you can see, especially if you're hitting London, you're hitting King's Cross on your own. Um, and uh, you you look like he does. He he would be in you know potentially this is this isn't good. It isn't good. And when I saw the pictures of him and I read this case, I I was horrified for him really. You know because um, I think people think that London is this great place and it is a great place. London, it is. But it's dangerous. It's a dangerous place. And I think people think that because London and other cities like London have lots of people in them, that people will notice what's going on, will notice you. That's the opposite, actually, to what really happens in a big city, especially like London. People are busy. You know, they haven't got time to stop. You go down Oxford Street, you can hardly move. You know, King's Cross there in 2007, you know, it's not the greatest area, right? It's all been done up since then. You know, St Pancras and all that's been done. There's a lot of work gone in to um, King's Cross area. But in 2007, you know, yeah, there was some work going on, but not like it is today. And there was a lots of, you know, undesirables um, around King's Cross area at that time. It's, uh, it's it's just not a great place to get on a train and think, you know, and people say, you know, the streets of London are paved with gold. No, they're not. No, they're not. Now, listen, his teachers have said that he was this quiet and shy boy. You know, that's how they characterised him, I suppose by saying that but they did say though that he was mature for beyond his years so he may have looked young he was highly intelligent and his maturity was there um, so he had that going for him I suppose you know others, stays, uh, others have stated though although you know he was 14 he looked very young and I've said that they say about 12 and he was very small for his age I'd say 12 is even pushing it to tell you the truth um, he wore really strong prescription glasses as well. He was deaf in one ear and he had a uh, distinctive double ridge on his ear. 
you would notice that. So if you have seen, or someone going by Andrew or Rue, he could have changed his name totally. Um, he's got very bad eyesight. Um, he would always need to wear these glasses. He wouldn't be able to not wear these glasses. You know, if he had gone, had need to an optician or whatever, he may have popped up by now on something we don't know. But you would definitely recognise him by the ear. Um, you know, that double um, piece of skin on top of the ear. So, you know, we have a small child looking quite young, looking vulnerable because of the way he looked. Also deaf in one ear and bad eyesight. Now getting off a train at King's Cross Station on their own on the 14th of September 2007. And their last sighting is a few clips on literally, and it's on a GIF gaff clip. So I can't use it, I can't find it because it's like three frames of this boy getting off or walking out of the old, um, you know, uh, King's Cross train station into the square there, you know, he's walking out. Now listen, from King's Cross, this boy could have gone anywhere. This boy could have gone down the tube, he could have gone anywhere. But why would he go and why would he only buy a one-way ticket? Why would he? So there's some questions here, isn't there, about why he left. Now, as I said, he was forgetful and his father said that he'd um, lost a couple of mobile phones. He wasn't interested in phones or anything like that. And the father said, you know, oh, I'll buy you a, another phone. And he said, no, I'll have an Xbox instead. So listen, this boy is a gamer, right? Now, the problem is with people that don't have phones and stuff, you can't contact them, can you? He wasn't that bothered about that. But the contact that worries me in this case is the contact online through Xbox. Was this boy groomed? <laughs> you know, really, realistically, why would this child, who seemingly had it all, really, gifted, had the ability to go to Cambridge University, this mathematician, a child that had disabilities, he was deaf in one ear, his eyesight was bad, yes he had a great character, yes he was older for his years, but what has happened to make this child get up, take £200, well first of all, before he even took the £200, he's lied to his family, he's gone and hid in the park area, after they've gone to work, gone back home, he's meant to be in school, gone back home, got changed, school because listen this boy's attendance was a hundred percent they haven't rung the mother you know he ain't a truant kid it ain't like he's off every day so the school haven't rung you know of course they haven't he's probably sick this is the sort of child that this school wouldn't have to worry about if he has a day off it wouldn't have mattered it didn't flag up anything he's sick it's one day i have a perfect record so why all this is going on and no one's noticing the parents are at work and out and about this boy sneaked back into his home, got changed, and he was last seen wearing a black slip, slip knot t-shirt, black jeans, trainers, um, a wristwatch, and was carrying a black canvas um, like satchel bag with patches of rock and roll metal bands on it, because that's what he liked. So he's gone home as he changed out of his school uniform, put all this stuff on, gone to the bank, took out 200 pounds in cash, 200 pounds, exactly 200 pounds. Didn't use his card, you know, 200 pounds in cash. Gone to the train station, refused the teller asking him to get a return or your day travel ticket. He said no. He was quite adamant. It was one way. And that was it. That was it. That's as much as we know. But the question is, why? Right, so the question then, as I've just said, is why? So let's go back over then the facts because this is what I want to ask you about. Because really I have my theories. I'd like to know yours. My theory is the minute I hear there's a gamer involved, you know, an Xbox or anything online, you know, um, was he groomed? Was he groomed over a long period of time? Was he? He could have been. The police say there was no um, you know, record of that. They couldn't find anything to do with that. So 
would I discount it because of that? No, I wouldn't, right? I wouldn't. I wouldn't discount that at all. Um, anyway, um, second thing, did he just run away? Had he had enough, for some reason or another, this boy decided he didn't want to go to Cambridge, right? I've had enough. I've had enough with school. He was already getting fed up with school, wasn't he? Then he'd gone to that summer camp, you know, with this university and seen what he could have. And he came back enthusiastic about life. Did he meet someone there? Did he see a different way of life to what he was living at home? Did he? He could have. And he could have walked away, got on that one-way train, that one-way ticket, you know, got that, gone to London and gone. Anywhere. Gone anywhere. That's another thing that could have happened. The fear is are endless, aren't they, really, of what could have happened to this child. But one of them could have been his own choice to do it. Because up until then, till he was last sighted outside, you know, King's Cross Station, coming out them doors on this tiny bit, tiny bit of um, CCTV camera uh, footage, he was on his own. But that's a worry, you see, on itself, isn't it? Because if I was buying a one-way ticket to London, I would be thinking, someone's going to pick me up. Someone's going to meet me. There's lots of places around as you come out of King's Cross Station where you can walk to. You know, I've often walked, you know, down to Covent Garden, a bit of a walk, but I know where I'm going. It's a bit of a walk, but you can do it. You can walk down to the Thames, you can walk along. Walk anywhere if you know where you're going or if someone's telling you where to go, where to meet them. But this boy, you see, didn't have a travel card or anything else. So what did he intend to do when he got to London? Go and see a rock and roll band? So why wouldn't he buy a return ticket? He loved heavy metal bands. You know, he loved all that. Slipknot and all this stuff. He loved it. If you're going to go to a show, you're going to buy the return ticket. You might get into a bit of trouble later when you get in. Really? Or was he going to meet someone that said, I'll take you home after, even though it was, you know, Doncaster? You don't know. This is what's the issue with this whole case, because really, after that boy, this tiny boy, comes out of King's Cross, he disappeared. And to this day, no one has ever heard from him since. No one. Not the family. The police has done investigations. Of course they have. They've looked into everything. But don't forget, in 2007, when this boy went missing, Madeleine McCann had gone missing. And her, she was dominating the news, right? Dominating the news. Many children, apart from Madeleine McCann, went missing around that time and didn't get the publicity that they should have got. Right? It should have been shared out, really, I think. Because this case highlights, doesn't it? Because really, unless it's not pushed at you now as a cold case, you know, all these years later, have you heard of this case? Probably not. So it's really important that if you think back to 2007, the 14th of September 2007, in the afternoon, what were you doing? Did you see this young lad? I mean, he would have been noticeable because he was young. As I say, it's London, right? King's Cross, so busy, so busy, I mean, I don't know what day, I don't know what day it was actually, because you had the market on, or you used to have out the market on the square on, the, on certain days, I mean, the place is packed, London's packed, this is one of the busiest places, I think, in London, King's Cross, because of the amount of places you can go from there, so listen, I don't know what else I can say about this case, so I really want to hear what you think could have happened to this boy. Was he groomed? Was he taken to London? Meet me in London. Then was he murdered? Because to tell the truth, we don't know. Did he decide, I've had enough, I'm leaving. Live on my own. Live my own life. Intelligent lad. Intelligent lad. He could have, apart from his demeanour, his height, his, you know, um, he would have been at a real risk in London, but he could have made it. You don't know. We just don't know. Listen, this family, 
this father asks for appeals all the time to push this case out. You know, we've had now the progression photos, age progression photos. There's been a few now, and you'll see them as I put them up. What he looked like then, what he looked like after, you know, a few years, what he looks like now. You know, this, this father, this people, this family want to know what happened to their child. They just want to know. So if he is out there, alive and well, living his best life, I think it's wonderful, but he should make contact with someone to let them know. But if you know anything about him, if you've seen this lad over the years through London or anywhere else, because just because he went to London doesn't mean to say he remained in London, as I said, go plenty of places, can't you? But really from Doncaster to come into London, you're coming to London for a reason, aren't you? You're coming to London for a reason. So let me know what you think about this case. Let me know on your theories of this case. And if you can, and if you do know anything, or you think you know, might know anything, I say this all the time, Every time I say this on this on any missing persons video, somebody always knows something. And this has been many, many years now. 2007, 14th of September, this boy left his home and never returned. Now, whether that was willingly, you know, or naively left his home with his 200 pounds and came to King's Cross. You know, people need to know. So any information, please contact anybody that is re in regards to this crime and I will put, well, I can't call it a crime, disappearance, because we don't know, do we? And even the father says, now they just need to know. They need to know whether their son is alive or dead. They need to know something, because at the moment, there's nothing. Again, another child that hits London and is gone without a trace. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this case interesting and the next case coming up, number three, will be up tomorrow. So you know what to do, you can press the like button, the subscribe button, the bell button to get notifications when cases are coming up. You can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. You will be able to pick up this case on Spotify. Let's have a chat about murder. So all I can say, until the next time, bye-bye.